The commentator hasn't been sleeping well lately, you know? And it's not because I recently had bronchitis, but because I was thinking, how is it that if someone is hiding in a grove and a tank shoots at them, and they're all kind of alive because the heat rounds from the last episode prove that trees actually save another tank from being penetrated. I have an RPG-18 in my hands, and do you know what I have it for? To check something out. You see those boxes over there? I thought, boxes are just like tree branches. Like, can you hide, take cover behind boxes if you're just hiding behind boxes? You know, they make such checkpoints, fill them with sand and all that. How does this threaten a person if he's sitting behind them? And by the way, somebody is sitting behind them. Take a look. They sent us a new ballistic gel. This is a head from Ballistic Body Dream Company. In general, thanks to the guys. They made everything reliable, high quality and durable. To be honest, this guy was a bit unlucky. I, uh, well... I landed a good one on him, you know, with my right hand. After all, I'm the Golden Gloves champion from 2008. Yeah, he's very well made. Very well made indeed, so to speak. You can do anything with him. From the previous episode, you probably already know that he has a practically complete circulatory system for the brain, or whatever it's called. The blood vessels of the brain. The blood vessels of the head, in short. So, I'll be shooting from 50 meters and I'll be shooting at these boxes. There are four of them here because the RPG-18 penetrates 300 millimeters of homogenous rolled steel, that is, tank armor and all that. Small tanks. And this guy will take the hit after the four boxes. What will happen to him? Will the splinters from these boxes fly into him or will the jet itself enter his skull and pierce it through and I will stand there and say, poor Yorick. Subscribe to Boosty, we're doing a lot of interesting things with these skulls now. We are collaborating very well with Ballistic Dream. So, all the gore, all our perversions, so to speak, you can see there with your own eyes. And I suggest we don't waste any time and blast away! The main idea of today's experiment is to see what happens when a heat jet penetrates cover behind which infantry is hiding. In this case, the infantryman, let's call him... Gypsy, maybe, or insta-female, no. Let's just call him... Johnny D. Johnny D. Alright, I'm at the starting position. Your job is to watch carefully and not miss it, because I only have one RPG, and as always, I might miss. And by the way, this RPG is very old, it's from 1975. This is probably the oldest tube I've ever held in my hands. You see how many impressions I've had lately? Last time it was the hottest crack I've ever been in. I'm talking about the tank versus tank episode. In this episode, it's the oldest tube I've ever held. What's next? Would there be mills and everything else? Well, actually, the age is just right. <laughs> Here she is, the beauty. So, I think it's done like this. Okay. Ready! Finishing blow. Johnny Cage, baby, don't hurt me, don't hurt me no more. Johnny, how are you? A slight hematoma, but that's nothing. A little cut, yes, there are some bruises, but overall. Well, a little singed. 
Ah, look, the cheekbone is slightly damaged. Yeah. The cheekbone is slightly damaged. Here's the chin, and the chin took a good hit. Well, that's nothing really. The main thing is that I have you. So here, I busted his lips deep. Well, stick your finger in there. <laughs> No, no, the teeth are perfectly fine, see? In short, I hit him in the beard a little bit. I think he could have had a dislocated jaw. What are you doing, man? We've been doing without butt all this time. See, not all of his blood has flowed out. So yes, the blood loss is not very big, that's good. So, let's watch the slow-mo and comment on it. What happened there? Because... Let's first... See... Hey man, stop bleeding. So let's first see where I hit it. To be honest, in the diopter side, which you see here is small, the hole here is small, but you still see almost the whole target. And hitting it exactly in the spot of the box that you need is not the easiest task. And in general, it's not very necessary because you're shooting at either an APC or a tank or an IFV or an MTL or some very fat guy. In short, look. I shot and hit the very box that was in the middle, on which this mannequin was actually standing. The jet passes through it, like this, a little bit, then hits the second box that is standing on it. By the way, is there anything left here? Yes, you see? Such a section breaks out, bam, it flies through the box itself flies through another box through the second one, you see, like this, tangential and behind the third box, it turns out our friend is standing but here, you see, there's also damage that is, in fact, we hit the target as needed and even if there was no direct hit of the jet to the head we see that the guy generally has some problems in short, look, hiding behind any obstacles is very useful because the heat jet expands. But you see, it passed literally a few centimeters from the face, slightly cinched it, and the boxes actually just knocked him down. I don't know if he has a concussion, but he probably does. You can write about this if there are any specialists. Secondary fragments slightly damaged his lip, slightly damaged his cheekbone, but this the fact that it came off is, let's say, a feature of this mannequin, that it contains this liquid inside, food coloring. See, if we open, that is, tear off a little bit, it kind of flows out. Therefore, this is not an indicator that there's profuse, massive bleeding here, like severe arteries and so on. Most likely, this bleeding may be there, but it is not, in my opinion, global, because overall, the head, well, as you can see, is intact in all aspects. That is, this skin is simulated with its muscles and so on is completely fine. By the way, this hematoma was there before the start and this one too. So, in fact, we see a, a small burn and definitely a concussion. And, well, even the teeth are intact, that is, everything is intact. So even secondary fragments didn't knock his teeth out or anything. Therefore, this is a good experiment showing that war is a harsh thing, but it doesn't mean that the first heat projectile would kill you all. This is Heavy Caliber Ruckus and Johnny D with you. And yes, you will say, what would happen if it's a fragmentation munition? Perhaps we'll check this and Johnny D will assist us further in this. Everything will be fine. See ya.